Hello all, so today we're going to fix some glitches and finish the game. So, first of all, I'm going to create some color variables to replace the fill over here. And this will be, you'll realize why this is significant later. But first, so color of the left paddle is color green. So this is RGB, this color of the right paddle yellow. So yeah, this is a neat variable that processing has. And I'm just going to replace this with color L and color R. And if I play this, it's still the same thing. The left is green, the right is yellow. Next, we're going to eliminate a glitch, this glitch. Do you see that? That happens when you hit the ball with the corner. I'm not going to make it, the collision look realistic, but I can at least eliminate this glitch. So if speed x is less, so here where we have the contact with the paddle, I'm going to ch check if the speed is, if the ball is going left, only then do we want to change the speed, um, the speed's direction. We don't want to keep changing directions, which is the problem that we are experiencing. And here, if the ball is going right, only then do we want to change the speed and collide. If I, the fix was as simple as that, and now I should not have that error anymore at all. And there we go. Okay. Next, I'm going to create a reset function and a way so the ball doesn't just bounce off the wall. We want the ball to reset. So where do we deal with this? We deal with this at bounce off. One of our methods, this is where the ball is bouncing off the wall. So if it hits the right side of, if it hits the right wall, then we want it to go through setup. That is it, we want it to reset. Every, we want to call this method the initialization. We want to initialize the whole game. I'm going to do that again. And I won't. Okay, so if I do that, see, it starts from the beginning every time. And if I lose on the left side, it still goes on the right side. So I don't want the same speed. So I'm just going to do that. Hmm, that didn't solve anything. Just trying. There we go. That should have solved it. It didn't really solve any problem. It's just me. Alright, so n next we're going to create a score system. For that, we need a score. We need to keep track of the score of the left paddle and the right paddle. That obviously means we need two variables. So score L and score R, and I'm going to go back and set them to zero. Processing usually sets them to zero by default, but it's a good practice to do so anyways. And I'm just going to, now we need a method to display the score. So I'm going to call it scores, and the other one is, okay, just scores for now. So down here, void scores, since that hasn't been created yet, now it has. If I played, nothing would happen. So to create, now we're going to learn how to create text. So text is colored with the same thing, fill, just like anything else. Text, the first is the text, then the X and Y. So say 100 by 50, that's the left side. But instead of putting the text, what I'm going to do is put the variable, the integer variable, score L. And I'm going to do the same with score right, except with minus 100. And now we should have two tiny scores. To increase the text size, you should do so in setup, so that doesn't keep looping. So text size, I found this to be a pretty expensive thing. I might, yeah, whatever. So now we have font 30. You can change the fonts, but I'm not going to do that this tutorial. Because I'm pretty satisfied with this font. And 
every time we lose like that, say if yellow loses, then we want the left score to go up, that is green score to go up. So naturally we're dealing with this section here, and I think I can delete that. Um, score R, if we're at, on the right side, then score L, my bad, equals score L plus 1. And I'm just going to copy that and change that to R. There, that works perfectly fine. Okay, and it resets every time, and there. But this will just keep on going forever. We want a condition that when it reaches a certain score, we want to end the game completely. So for that, I'm going to create a winning score, into win score. I'm going to call it two just for development purposes, but you can make it 11 or 22 or whatever you want for your game. So for that, I'm going to need another method in draw called, uh, you can call it anything you want, but I'm going to call it game over. So this is going to figure out whether the game is over, void game over. And it's as simple as if the score on the left side is equal to um, win score, then we're going to do, and then that means the game is over. The same if the other score wins, right? And now I'm going to create, I'm going to set it, an indicator in here, you know. Actually, no, I'm just going, I'm going to create another method called game over page. And this time we'll do something new. We will pass variables. I'm going to pass a new variable called string. This is basically text. String text. And I'm going to pass the color C. You can call these whatever you want. I'm going to call game over page and pass on the variable text. So if L wins, then L was green, so green wins. And the color, I need to pass the color. So I'm going to pass the color color L, of course, since we're talking about the left one. No choice here. Yellow wins. Color R. If I play this, nothing will happen since we have this is an empty function. So let's make it not so empty. First, I'm going to print. First, I'm going to freeze the game. So I want speed x to equal 0, speed y to equal 0. That is, we don't want the balls to move anymore. Stop moving. We're done. So 1, 2, freeze. There. Next thing we want to print the text, so text um, game over at width divided by 2, height divided by 3 minus 40, I'm just, I know these numbers work, actually there's something that won't work but we'll deal with it later, you know, and here I want to set, put this text either yellow wins or green wins, just below that. And below that, I'm going to say um, click to re to play again. Sure. And this is going to be a bit below. And here, the text will be colored. The color I pass. That's why I pass the color. And and now, of course, we need to create some weight. So if we click, and I want the whole game to reset. So. Um, we want the scores to equal zero. Again, we want this. We want. I think there's something that I'm missing here, but I'll I'll remember it later. Yeah, this was the text problem I was talking about. We expected this to be in the center, right? Width divided by two. Nope. Instead, the left side is on the center. So we're going to change the alignment of the text in setup. So text align, center horizontally, and center vertically. You can play with that, with top, bottom, etc. And now it's in the center. If I play, oh yeah, the speed is, the speed is still zero. So we need, that's what I was forgetting. We need to change 
a speed. We need to make it move again, unfreeze. Again, you can put any v values you want here. I'm going to just keep it that way. I'm going to make, I'm going to change the color of click to play again to white. Yeah, sure, white. And the game over to also white. In fact, I'm going to save space, remove this one, and put it on top of this fill. Remember that code is red from top to bottom. So I can do that, and nothing would change except the colors the way I want it. Cool. Now, if if yellow wins, no, it should print in yellow, which was the whole point of that. Yellow wins. And there we go. Okay, so we're done with this tutorial series. This is the end of the Pong game. From here, you can do anything, add sound effects, add anything you want.